And then when the glory's normal, healing and deliverance will be normal. Not, ah, there's a demon. Oh, no. Ah. How many have been in India or on a mission? Where you, on a mission you go on a mission I've been in India five times in my life. And, you know, they demonize people just queue up for deliverance. Amazing. And they go, oh, Craig, you know, when he touches me, I'm going to get saved. Or I'm going to be free. I remember a woman, I'll tell you a little story about that. She had a husband, never walked, was sick, and there's a dog. And she, you know those little um, trolleys that the older people take to the supermarket and they got the little wheels on it? She got to a set of those wheels, hammered it to a plank of wood, lay her husband on the plank of wood, get this. And she, she got down on the floor, lifted her husband on the back and did this for 10 miles. How's that for faith? You know? And we've got all the teaching of faith in the world, and we're still dry as chips. And she travelled 10 miles, sat at the back, there was about 20,000 people, which in India is not a big meeting, but it was big, you know? And then all the team, we had about 80 on the team praying for the sick, and, you know, oh, how many blind eyes did you heal tonight? Oh, I don't know, about 20, you know, it becomes normal because they come so expectant. Anyway, this uh, was at the end of the night. One of our super grannies on the team. I love that. I found that on those mission trips, it was the, the older people who were actually stronger than the younger people. She was a super granny. She was 77. She was one of those feisty, slim grandmothers, you know. Righto, come on. You know, she, she was like right there. She was 77 going on 15. She was one of those sort of ladies. <clears throat> and she went up the back. She said, what's wrong? Oh, I come, my husband, not well. You know, I got him my back for 10 miles. Oh, she's like, whoa. Get up in the name of Jesus. Ba-doing. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It was as nonchalant as that. She'd been expecting all week. And expecting all day. Oh, I got nine miles to go. It's okay, Punjab, nine miles to go, and you will walk home with me. Are we there yet? Got three miles to go. How's your back? We got two miles to go. Incredible. That's adventure, you know. I don't want to live a boring Christian life where I just go and do a one-hour service and then get all tangled up in the world all week and just get the life sucked out of me. How many feel like that? A good soldier does not entangle himself with the affairs of this life. How do we do that? How do we do that now? Forget in the 90s or the 80s, but how do we do that in our accelerating world when everything's so expensive and the demands are so much? We've got to walk by faith. We've got to yield. We've got to let the, the peeling happen on the mandarin of our life. We've got to yield to God. You know, a million dollars shouldn't be a big deal in our heads, but it does because of the pressure of economy and the pressure of everything going up. And then we start to fear, you know, and our soul gets in the road and we think, oh, we're never going to have a house. We're never going to do this. We're never going to do that. But one day, you know, God has a plan for us. Our God's bigger than it. The Bible says in Psalm 24, the earth, the earth is the Lord's and every single thing in it. Think about that. Incredible. 